Alright, I uh, just finished my next book. The Return of the Bird Tribes. By King Terry. So it was a really good read. Uh, I left a 5 out of 5 stars on goodread.com for it. Giving confirmation to what I have been personally reflecting in my life and absolutely necessity for those who claim to be starseeds or part of the conscious community. Talks about the Sioux history. The white buffalo calf woman in, is in the book for a confirmation to the soul mission of many healers. The Galactic Federation is referenced to or referenced in this book in a subtle way. The last part of the book gets into the kind of incarnation of those who have been guiding humanity with the challenges and assistance for creator's intent for mankind. Many lessons for those wanting to understand what is really happening on earth and the current changes. So, let's have a few things here. So I have, when a certain tribe began to think of cooperation with us as working with the invisible spirits of non-physical beings that they could not see with their eyes but whom they felt landing like huge birds in the branches of their central nervous system, they reacted in fear. Instead of seeing our light-hearted spirit values as the profound basis for co-creation with their own durable physical values. The egos of this tribe began to fear this healthy and quite compatible difference in value systems. They gave they gave an exaggerated emphasis to their legitimate function of caring for the physical body and began to see our spirits as lacking in sufficient respect for their for the physical plane. They rejected our spiritual values, seeing them as frivolous and irresponsible. Identified with the piece of the puzzle with an aspect of their own wholeness, they did not realize that by, that by doing this, they were in fact rejecting their true selves and choosing instead fictitious moral, mortal identities. They are focusing on the shadows and not upon the beams of light and cast them. Seeing spirit as separate from themselves, the egos cut themselves off from the inner direction designed to guide the multiplication and flourishment of these of their species on earth. In these tribes, the incarnation of the angelic spirits was interrupted, the human creation unfinished. But without the ego's cooperation, the acquired spirit ego bonding could not take place. And then, uh, I think I got another part here for you. There's this part in here, in here I can find it right now. I'm looking for it. It talks about the hierarchy system is not uh, part of the tree of peace. Uh, hierarchy is tree of war. As, uh, hierarchy is not a good thing. Um, also, Towards the end. 
Oh, it also references the bird tribes as being like uh, Galactic Council in a sense. It doesn't say it exactly like I'm saying it, but that's what I got from it. That it's a bunch of benevolent beings that may not be of the same species, but are in unison with the creator of all things. Um, oh, and the Buffalo Woman, I think was a hybrid. It talks about how, how she had bl big black eyes, like she's... Um, this is what I think. I, I, I think that she was a, a hy hybrid between human and tall whites, and possibly the greys, which are just another ostrich, of, like the cousins of the tall whites. Uh, but, um, so a lot of this that uh, is talking from the bird tribes is um, after all of their, you know, issues that they may have had and uh, come out of it and connected with the Creator, um, which I think the tall whites are not, um, um, completely innocent in all of this, like some Un, or uh, a perfect li uh, 250 billion years or whatever existence that they existed and never ever 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 done any genocide <laughs> which they did or attempted to um, but you know they, they got it they um, evolved or adapted out of that so they're not like that anymore but still so they're not perfect currently either. Um, that's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, also, it talks about here towards the end about the uh, what I've been trying to say and what I've been trying to tell people. It's like a confirmation of what I know and knew from for years now, many years. Um, towards the end of the book here, a uh, big huge confirmation what I'm. You know, uh, the micro to the macro chasm of humanity to the creator, quantum physics, quantum entanglement, quantum mechanics. One man can save the world, one man can change the world. Um, let's see here, where is it? Twenty billion years. This is. To we who have followed this process for twenty billion years, there is nothing more incomprehensible than the concept which is contained in the warrior society that there could be conflict or opposition between the feminine aspect of God and the masculine aspect of God. Do you realize how severely this concept limits you? Limits who accept it. You will not find your place in the universe or form a basis of, for understanding her mysteries until sh you shed such superstition and realize that Mother God and Father God are in profoundly in love. All about this universe that is feminine worships that is masculine. And the sole purpose of all about this universe that is masculine is to serve the feminine through the celebration and animation of beauty that lies in your heart. The feminine and the masculine are balanced in all healthy manifestations, equal partners, lovers, the truest twin friends. Your ancestral programming is invalid. Primitive notions of conflict between male and female lead to not so primitive weapons. Let your human world reflect instead the truth of the great love in which you are every moment has been awakened into a new perception and understanding of reality. Reality, not as misinterpretation by the warrior tribes, but as understood by all the angelic races of God throughout eternity. Awakened into an accurate perception of the universe in which you live. You are the, are the love of the Creator embodied in human form. Through the power of your love, you create. You are here in the service of universal art to create beauty and to enjoy all that has been created. The evocation of beauty and the description of truth, this is your purpose. 
the purpose of life, the very purpose of the universe. Is in its own way, each species decides how it can best serve this purpose once it understands it. The buffalo looks around and notices what is going on in the prairie time and prairie space and designs a life to describe truth and to animate beauty as buffaloes understand it. Wells describe time and space in their own unique forms of three-dimensional mobility, playing and swimming through seas of sound and light. The caribou embody their understanding of their universe and create caribou beauty. Seagulls embody their understanding and create seagull beauty. Angels embody their understanding with, of this universe purpose and become the means through which great spirit creates more species to enjoy it. Throughout the galaxies, throughout the stars, all of the angelic races notice this purpose of life and decide how they can best serve. Each healthy species looks at the external world. While experiencing the internal unity and cool, whole and unbroken, the forms and idea of the wholeness of manifestation life. This is its comprehensive comprehension of the universe. Human beings' technical comprehension of the universe has expanded beyond the caribou of the wells or the wells. They have explored the microbes and begun to reach out to the stars. Yet your historical rejection of eternal spirit has left you my up my up it. You're cited with no overview of larger vision to help you organize your knowledge into a coherent world. You are the instruments through which creation is to become physically conscious, the species through whom one day the whole material universe shall become aware. You are God's organs of awareness, awakening, and in, in this turning age from the sleep of historical subconsciousness, masculine and feminine are both rooted in the unified divinity with whose spirit now awakens in you, whose identity you now remember to be your own. In spirit you are not separate from these two aspects of God, but have brought them into being from the infinite ocean of your wholeness. To clothe yourself, to know yourself as this family in time, creation is brought into being through the loving interaction of these, your own inner polarities. So there you go, folks. Uh, great book. you got to read it if you want to keep up you know, or not fall to the wayside of time and be in unison and not have to struggle into the Baba Chakra, the prison cell that you put yourself in or allow yourself to go to. Because the, that's what it is, is the, it's the keeper of time through illusions until you're ready. It's like, um, it's like a carnival <laughs> the dark carnival. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, you can be in the dark carnival or you can wake up to the reality of what's really going on in the universe. Your decision. I mean, whether you want to be a part of it or not, it's still going to do what's going to do, people. You're not going to be able to be like, oh well, if we control it some way. No, that's not going to happen. I'm sorry. But all right, love you guys. Please leave a like, thumbs it up, subscribe, hit that bell, all notifications, please, and thank you. Okay.